Hi everyone, thank you for doing your devotions with me today. We are in Psalm 53. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that we can spend this time in your word. We pray, Lord God, that you would convict us and speak to us. And Lord God, lead us to really know and understand what your message is for us today. We thank you, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Psalm 53, it says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They're corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on God, but they are they are overwhelmed with dread where there was nothing to dread God scattered the bones of those who attacked you you put them to shame for God despised them oh that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when God restores his people that Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad amen this passage begins with a declaration of the fool what it there is no God and that is what it means to be a fool to know to think that in their hearts there is no God mm, it really is just a the actual limitations of their own minds Right, that they are unaware of. I've been watching the show called Young Sheldon lately. Um, and when you watch it, like Young Sheldon, Sheldon is a genius, but he's an atheist. Right? And in his own limitations, he's a fool. Because although he may be smart and able to understand very complex and complex things he doesn't realize his own limitations and that's what makes him a fool because he doesn't know that god is greater than him um, and he thinks that he is he should be fully capable of understanding everything there's a limitation to him and that's what makes him a fool but the reality is that so many of us live that way even if we confess that we believe in god we often live as though God doesn't exist. And that's what he says. There is none who seek God. No one who does good. No one who seeks God. Um, and we realize it is impossible to do good without believing in God. And this is what it says. And so they live in dread. Right? But there, they are overwhelmed with dread. There, where there was nothing to dread. They are overwhelmed with dread because they fear death, because they fear life, because they fear so many things because they don't have faith in someone that is greater or something that is greater. The blessing of being a Christian is that we don't need to be afraid of death. We don't need to be afraid of life because we believe in the one who holds us in his hands. And all of life then is one of peace because God holds our lives, holds our future, holds our death, and he holds our resurrection in his hands. So nothing to fear. This is the hallmark of someone who believes in the word of God and someone who believes in God. And so this is what how we should be living. And we need to really question ourselves and be afraid of, no, not maybe not be afraid, but be mm, weary of our own doubts because it limits the freedom and the fullness of the life that God has intended for us as believers in Christ. And so that's my um, encouragement to you and to myself that we would not be afraid, but we would in faith trust in the Lord believing in him, living our lives in faith. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much 
We're so thankful, O oh Lord God, that we can live by faith. We can trust in you. We can understand what it means, O oh God, to be a people of faith, Lord. So come and lead us. Come and fulfill within our hearts, O oh Lord God, this freedom, the fearlessness that you allow as we put our hope and our faith and our trust wholly in you, God. We thank you so much, Lord. And we pray all this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day today. Bye-bye.